Samantha, how long are you going to take? What time are you coming home? What are you doing with Cindy? It's already this late. Where have you been all morning? You didn't even come home to make lunch. I've been at the hospital to have a checkup. I reminded you when I left this morning, didn't I? And I think I told you that I would have this checkup a week ago when I made the appointment. I mentioned that I wouldn't be able to prepare lunch for you. I'm thinking of going to my parents' house to let them see Cindy. I'll spend a few hours there, and hopefully Cindy will be able to have a nap before I come home. Cindy was only born last week. You can't parade her about outside all day. You've got to bring her home right now. It's already this late. I can't believe you could be so irresponsible. Don't you care about Cindy at all? She could get sick this late. It's still 1.30 and there's no need to be so overprotective. I've taken precautions for the sunlight and we're only going to see my parents. It's not like I'm taking her to meet everyone I know or pushing her pram through a crowd of sick people. I'm following the doctor's advice and making sure she has undisturbed rest and gets her milk. I wouldn't do anything that I didn't think we both could manage. But you can't keep her away from me this long. She's already been away from me for three hours. Cindy needs me. You can't do this to her. Give her back to me. What are you talking about? She's not a thing and she's not yours. I've decided that I'll raise Cindy myself. I can't trust you with her. I've watched how you've been with her for the past week and it's obvious that you're no good as a mother. You don't know how to take care of her. If you raise her, she'll end up unhappy. Or worse, she'll be unhappy and she'll be rebellious. It's people like you that end up raising criminals. I can't just stand by and watch you ruin her life. The best thing for Cindy is if you give her up. I'll raise her as my own daughter. She's mine, so give her back. Cindy is my first child, so of course I don't expect to be able to do things perfectly all by myself. That's why I've been listening to all the advice you've been giving me this week, and I'm really happy that you're helping. But no matter what I do, you keep on complaining that I'm doing things wrong. So that's what you're thinking of me? I'm doing my best to help you. How can you be so ungrateful? I bet you think that I'm in the way, don't you? You're the one that's living in my house. I'm letting you stay here. I'm providing the roof over your head, and I don't even ask for rent. I've done so much for you. And this is how you repay me? This is why I never approved of Alex marrying a woman like you. You're the one that asked that we moved in with you. Alex and I were living together in our own house after we got married, and we planned to stay there. But you wanted us all to live together. You were the one that said you always wanted to live with your grandchild. You pretty much forced us to move in with you once you found out that I was pregnant. And I had to go through all the trouble of moving houses when I was already really big. Why do you have to put it like that? I never forced anything. Just ask Alex. He was delighted to move back in with us. I've done so much for you. It wouldn't hurt for you to show a little more appreciation too. Can't you at least say thank you? I think I deserve a lot more, but I shouldn't expect anything from you. Appreciation? I had a lot more of that when I first met you. But ever since I married your son and you started to show your true colors, it's become a lot more difficult, especially after we moved in together. And you wouldn't stop making hurtful comments about the way I did chores and the way I prepared dinner. The stress and fatigue just piled up and up. And I couldn't please you no matter what I did. I didn't know you could get any ruder. When have I ever made hurtful comments about anything you've ever done? If I've made comments, it's just because I'm giving you advice as your senior in life. If you think I've been hurtful, it's because you're trying to make me out as the bad person in this story. I'm an adult too. I understand the difference between advice and sarcastic backhanded comments. And it's not just those comments. You don't like the food I make, even though I've done my best to follow your recipes. And if you really don't like my cooking, then you can always make your own. But you insist on having me prepare your serving too. And sometimes you throw it all away right in front of me. It's not just insulting, it's wasteful. Did you really think that I could just brush that off as advice? I don't understand how you could do something so mean just for the sake of showing me you don't like my cooking. I threw it away because it didn't taste good. What's the problem? Did you really think that it was good enough to serve to Alex and my husband? Nobody would want to eat something disgusting like that. So I saved them the trouble. I just did what they would have wanted to do anyway. If anything, you should be thanking me for not letting them eat something as horrible as that slop you call food. That's what I'm talking about. In the past few months we've spent living together, you've never eaten my food without making a face a comment, or throwing it all away. On top of that, you were making me do all the housework right up until the birth. I couldn't have a moment's rest while you were around, even though my back hurt and my feet hurt, and I was so tired. 
Even when my contraction started and I was begging for you to call an ambulance because Alex was out, you wouldn't call and told me that I was overreacting. I couldn't even get to the phone myself. I thought I was going to give birth right where I was. It wasn't until Robert passed by my room and noticed that my water had broken that I was finally able to go to the hospital. I'm grateful for my father-in-law's care and consideration. But if you want me to be grateful for you, then you'll have to do something I can be grateful for first. You shouldn't expect everyone to do everything for you. You could have gone to the hospital by yourself. You're so spoiled. It shows that your parents must have been overly protective of you as a child. No wonder you're so disrespectful towards me. Did you really think that I could drive all the way to the hospital safely when I was getting contractions every five minutes? Even after I gave birth, you didn't say anything to me. You didn't ask me how I was doing. Not even a word about how well I had done. Even though I was in labor for 15 hours. I was too busy thinking about Cindy. What did you expect? My first and only priority was the baby. So what if you gave birth? It's nothing special. I gave birth too, and you don't see me begging everyone for praise and compliments. I didn't expect you to compliment me, but I think anybody would be happy to hear something from their family. And anything would have done. And I'd like to remind you that I was only discharged from the hospital a week ago. I've been waking up over and over in the middle of the night to feed Cindy. I haven't had any sleep at all this past week. I'm still trying to get used to a lot of new things. A lot of new emotions and a new sleep routine. And I'm literally all over the place. But you're still making me do all the housework. I thought you said that it would be better for us all to live together because you'd be able to help out with the baby. But you haven't been doing anything. Even though Alex and his dad say that I don't have to do anything to rest when I can and not to push myself too hard, I have to do everything while they're at work because you won't do anything. Oh, you really are spoiled. You were the one that married my son, not the other way around. What's the point in having you here if you're not going to do the chores? You can't seriously think that you can spend your days just laying around doing nothing. You're being childish if you think that's how things work. Just because you've moved in with us, I'm here to be with Cindy, not with you. And you shouldn't expect everyone to be nice and kind to you just because you've given birth. So what? That doesn't change anything. You're sorely mistaken if you think you get to slack off just because you've had a baby. The one thing we all care about is Cindy. I couldn't care less about you, and nobody else does either. We only need Cindy. I can't believe you're not going to even bother to hold back your punches. I take it you mean that there's no use for me at your house if I'm not going to do all of your housework for you? That's right. I'm glad you finally understand. We only need Cindy to make us happy. I don't need a rude, disrespectful, annoying daughter-in-law like you around the house. If you're not even going to do what you're here for, even if you did do the chores and prepare our food, you're useless. I end up having to redo everything you do anyway. You are just wasting my time. And having you here is a waste of space too. So we don't need you here. So you think I'm rude and useless? All right. What? Am I wrong? I don't think I said anything you couldn't understand. I made it quite clear. We don't need you in this house. To be honest, I'd prefer if you'd leave as soon as possible and never come back. You don't have to worry about Cindy. She'll be in good hands. We'll raise her without you. I think that's best for her as well. She doesn't need a useless woman like you as her mother. I just want to check if you want me to leave. Then that means you don't want to live with me, doesn't it? How many times do I have to tell you? I don't want to live with you and I want you out of my house. Do you understand? Yes, I do. I understood that perfectly. Then I won't be coming back. I'll be staying at my parents' house. They've got a spare room that I can use, so there's no reason for me to return today. I'll go and get my things another day. Will that make you happy? Of course. Do whatever you want. You're an adult. I don't care where you stay, as long as it's not in my house. Nobody in this house is waiting for you to return anyway. I'll have Alex go and collect Cindy from you when he gets home from work. So make sure she's had her rest and you've got all her things ready by then. I'll let you spend these last few hours with her, at least. You're not going to come back to this house, so this will be the last time you ever see her. I'm glad you finally come to your senses. You're not fit to be a mother. I understood the part about not coming back to stay in your house. But you're wrong about one thing. I am not handing my daughter over to you. Cindy is staying with me. I'm her mother. What are you talking about? I just told you you're not fit to be a mother. Are you going to take her away from me? You can't do that. She needs me. Oh, you think that I'm not fit to be a mother because I need support to raise her and because I can't handle all of the housework on just one hour of sleep a night? You expect the impossible from me. You're saying that I'm taking her away from you, but you're not her mother. 
She was never yours to begin with. She's my granddaughter. That makes her mine. I don't think that your way of thinking that she belongs to you is very healthy for Cindy. I don't think that raising her in an environment where you think that you can treat me however you like is good for her either. Alex and Robert have both lost their patience with the way you've been treating me. I know that the both of them have done their best to talk with you privately and get you to change your attitude, but it still hasn't changed after months. And if it's only going to get worse now that Cindy's born, I'd rather not live with you either. Your own son and husband have given up on getting you to change your ways, so there's no way I can keep hoping. Robert as well? You're lying. I remember him mentioning something about you, but I forgot what he said. It didn't seem very important, but I know they all hate you. Nobody wants you to stay in our house. And we're all happy that you finally have given birth so we can get rid of you and keep Cindy. Who's they? Do you mean Alex and Robert? Because I know Alex loves me. And Robert is a wonderful father-in-law. And even if they did actually hate me, I think they'd be more mature about it. You've been far from mature these past few months. You've been passive-aggressive and childish at best. All you've done is bully me and make me feel bad about myself. I've had enough. We've all had enough of your behavior. If you're not going to fix it, then there's no point in sticking around and waiting for you to change. I'm not returning to your house. And if you won't reflect on your actions, I won't let you meet Cindy. You won't let me see Cindy? That's ridiculous. You can't do that. You can't keep her away from me. You have no right to do that. I'm not going to listen to a woman that can't even raise a child properly. You don't have to come back, but I'm not letting you keep Cindy. Give her back right now. Cindy will be happier that way, and you'll thank me one day when you realize that she belongs with us, not you. Don't be so selfish and give her up. I'm sorry, but who's we? Alex, Robert, and I. The three of us will raise her without you. I know that we can make Cindy a million times happier if you're not around to ruin her life. She doesn't need a failure of a mother like you. You should give her back to me for her sake. Robert's actually with me right now. Alex will be here soon too. He's already asked his manager for the rest of the day off after he's finished in his meeting. The truth is, it wasn't a hospital appointment I had this morning. I'm sorry I had to lie, but you wouldn't let me leave the house until I said that I would be going to the hospital. What? Then where were you? What were you doing? I was being honest when I told you I would be going to my parents' house, but I was somewhere else this morning. I went to have a viewing of a house with Robert to get his opinion. You went to see a house? But why would you do that? I didn't tell you to leave my house until an hour ago. And why would you need my husband's opinion? Alex and I have decided that we're going to move out. And when we told Robert, he was very interested in the idea too. Maybe you should ask him for the details when he returns home tonight since I won't be coming back ever. But why would Robert be interested in looking at a new home? Alex and I have been thinking about moving back out ever since we first moved in with you and you started to bully me. We've both hit our limits and we can't take it anymore. It's too stressful being with you all day, every day. And he doesn't complain, but I know it's tough on Alex when I vent after he's had a long day at work. It's been hard for the both of us. The only reason why we didn't move out earlier is because it was a strain on my body to move our stuff to your house in the first place. And we didn't want to go through that again. Hit your limits? Stressful? What's that supposed to mean? You're just exaggerating. How pathetic. All I'm doing is showing you how to do things properly. Alex has had enough of your behavior too. He can't stand the way you speak to me. And he knows that you've been throwing away the food I make as well. He knows about how you follow me around when I do the laundry and the washing up nitpicking at every single thing. He promised me that we would make preparations so that we can move out as soon as the baby was born. And he kept that promise. He found a few places that were open for viewing and cut the choices down to two places so I wouldn't have to go back and forth. When we spoke to Robert, he offered to pay half the deposit, saying that he wanted to come with us. Excuse me? Robert wants to move out? Well, he was obviously including me when he said that. He meant that he wanted to move in with us and move away from you. Apparently, he's had enough of your attitude as well. And since you won't change, no matter how many times he's spoken to you, he's decided to leave you. He's telling me that he left the divorce papers on the table in the living room. Have you seen them? He says he's already signed them. So you just have to sign your side and leave them there. He'll have them filed tomorrow. I found them, but I don't understand. Why would he want to divorce me? I haven't done anything to deserve this. Give your phone to him. I want to speak to my husband. He's with you, isn't he? Let me talk to him. I can't trust a word you say. Why would I lie? Those papers have already been signed, haven't they? 
I wouldn't fake his signature just to trick you. Robert says that he'll talk to you when he gets home, but that he's already made his feelings clear in past conversations. You just haven't been listening to him properly. Anyway, we're busy getting our new home ready. Could you wait until later? I don't understand why Robert and Alex have to move away too. I only said that you don't need to come home. What about me? What am I supposed to do? They can't leave me here by myself. Robert says that he'll give you that house in the divorce. He has no need for it if he's moving in with us. And he doesn't want you causing us trouble just because you can't find a new home for yourself. You're lucky he's being so generous. Alex and I have no intention of living with you ever again. And of course, we're not going to give you our daughter. Robert's decided he wants a divorce and that he doesn't want to live with you anymore. I think that explains everything you want to know. What about me? I'm going to live here all by myself? You're not making any sense. Why can't I come with you? Weren't you listening to what I said? We've told you over and over that the way you've been treating me is unacceptable. We wouldn't have had to do this if you had fixed up your attitude and stopped behaving so immaturely. If you listened to your own husband's warnings and your son asking you to stop treating me so horribly, we would have never decided to move out. We would still be living with you and you would still be able to spend time with your loved ones. But unfortunately, you haven't shown any signs of changing or even feeling bad about what you've done. You deny all responsibility. And we've had enough. Because of your selfishness, you'll have to spend the rest of your life all alone. What about Alex? What does he think? He can't be serious about leaving his own mother all alone. I raised him. He's better than that. He would never abandon me like this. You've tricked him into thinking that I'm the bad person and convinced him and my husband to follow you. Have you forgotten that Alex was the one that always was intervening and defending me from you when we first moved in? He was doing his best to keep himself between you and I when he could, and making sure that I wasn't stuck with you alone when he was at home. But then he had to start a new project at work and was coming home tired more often, and didn't even have the strength to argue back to the things you were saying to me. The stress of work and your treatment of me was accumulating for him too. That's when he promised that he would find us a new place to live. We realized that the best way to deal with the situation was just put up space between us and you for the sake of our physical and our mental health. You're lying. Alex would never want to leave me. And Robert can't be serious about getting a divorce at this age. I'll never be able to get remarried. I'll be alone. Can't he rethink the divorce? I'll do anything. He's not honestly thinking we should get divorced, is he? You'll have to talk to Robert directly about that. Though he says that there's nothing more to say. And we've already chosen a new home that has enough room for the three of us and Cindy. Robert is welcome to live with us, but there's no room here for you. Moreover, Robert's actually put a lot of money into this house for us. He's been very considerate since Alex and I had to pay a lot for the hospital bills last week. We don't plan on telling you where our new address is either. But I'll never be able to see Cindy ever again. Are you honestly going to separate us? I'm not going to let you see her. You'll have to show that you can change first. I don't know if you can, but if you want to see her, you'll have to. I don't plan on meeting you until then either. I'm sure you don't care whether you see me again or not, but I just wanted to make it clear that this is what happens when you treat someone as though they're inferior to you. You end up alone. What did I do to deserve this? Why is everyone leaving me behind? They're telling me that I have to spend the rest of my life, my elderly years, all alone? That's too much. You don't have to go this far. I thought I would be able to spend the last 20 years of my life taking care of my grandchild. I wanted to have peace and quiet and not worry about any of the chores or worry about money. This isn't what I wanted. I was dreaming of my life as a grandmother, but now I'll have to get a job. I have to do everything myself. I won't be able to see my family. It's not fair. Really? I guess you hoped that I would be the person to take care of all the chores and plan to live off your husband's saving and pension all without lifting a finger yourself. But you ended up breaking that dream with your own hands. You should have been more respectful towards the people around you if you wanted them to love and take care of you. I'm tired of you complaining about every little thing I do, but now you'll have to do everything yourself and you won't be able to see your family ever again. That's the price you've paid. You'll have to accept it. Fine, I understand. I made a mistake. I shouldn't have been so nagging. I'll do my best to get on with you from now on. I'll change the way I've been acting towards you. So please don't move out. It's too late for that. We've already paid the deposit and signed the documents for the house. We won't change our minds about living away from you. And we'll be moving all of our things into the new place over the next few days. We're all going to live here in peace without you. 
Robert will be returning to your house this evening to pack up our essentials, so you should have a good long talk with him then. He'll be staying there until all of our things have been moved, but he's quite adamant about having the divorce, so I suggest you forget about talking him out of it and talk about how you can make an effort to change your behavior. That way, you might have a chance to meet Cindy in the future. Samantha, I'm sorry. Let's all live together. I don't want to be alone. I think we might have gotten off to a bad start, but I'll change. I'll do whatever it takes. I'm sure you'll come to understand why I was so harsh towards you. It was for your sake, but I won't do that anymore. Just, just let me see Cindy. I find it hard to believe that you'll change when you're still making excuses. You can't even apologize properly. It's too late, after all. You can't change. Besides, you were saying yourself that you don't want to live with me, remember? I confirmed over and over, and you said that you wanted me to leave. Well, I don't want to live with you either. I hope you'll enjoy your final years without a rude, useless woman like me in the way. After her conversation with Samantha ended, Chloe had no choice but to wait for her husband to come home. The first thing Robert did when he returned to the house was to tell her that he wanted a divorce and that he wasn't going to change his mind. He checked that she had signed the papers and took them to his lawyer to have them filed. He didn't speak a word to Chloe after that and spent his time packing away all of his things. Anything that had to be dealt with regarding the divorce was done through his lawyer and he was able to move houses without much fuss. Chloe got the house and the divorce, but it was brought to her lawyer's attention that she had spent Robert's savings on several occasions without his permission. And as a result, the amount she received in alimony payments decreased significantly. It wasn't enough for her to keep up the payments for the household bills, so she had to find a job in order to earn some money to pay for other essentials. She was so desperate to meet Cindy that she went to Samantha's parents' house and demanded that they tell her Samantha's new address. It didn't occur to her that she should have just shown Samantha that she was making an effort to change. In the end, Samantha's parents called the police because of how aggressive Chloe was being, and Chloe was taken away in a police car to be questioned. Chloe was not only divorced and looking for a job, but she was also slapped with a restraining order from Samantha's parents. On the other hand, Samantha and Alex were living happily ever after with their small family and were looking forward to having their next child. Robert was delighted. He was freed of his selfish wife and was taking great pleasure in taking care of his granddaughter.